In this two-part example, we'll solve a system of ODEs describing the dynamics of an epidemic plaguing a population. We made this problem a long time ago because we thought it was an interesting hypothetical problem. Turns out it's more relevant than ever. Kind of funny how the world works. Anyways, we have a population of people. At every point in time, each citizen is categorized in one of three groups. Susceptible, infected, or recovered. A susceptible person is not yet infected but is at risk of being infected. The infected category is self-explanatory. A recovered person was infected at one point in time but is now virus-free. In this model, you follow the flow of the diagram you see here. For example, in order to become recovered, you must first have been infected. Also, you cannot become infected or recovered more than once. Finally, you can only be in one category at any moment in time. You cannot be both susceptible and infected simultaneously. That said, you can be susceptible at one point in time and then become infected in the future. Normally, you're given the ODE and you're just told to plug it into ODE 45. But we've really only given you one equation here. We are given the equation for DSDT, which is the rate of change of the number of susceptible people in the city. We obtain this using the diagram at the top of the problem statement. To derive the equation, we need to apply a conservation law, just as we would for, say, a statics or a thermo problem. In statics, you draw a free body diagram and use Newton's second law. In thermo, you draw a control volume and apply conservation of energy and or conservation of mass. We need to do something similar here. The diagram shows us how the three groups interact. The link between the susceptible and infected groups is given by the ASI term, and the link between the infected and recovered groups is given by the RI term. A and R represent the infection and recovery rates, respectively. This whole diagram is akin to a chemistry model. Let's say you have a certain concentration of chemical S floating around in a beaker, and then you add a certain concentration of chemical I. They intermix and react and eventually form something else. Therefore, the ASI and RI terms can be called the cross-mixing terms because they represent how each individual group mixes with the others. What we need to do is apply a conservation law to each box. In this case, the quantity we're conserving is people. The rate of change of each group equals the quantity coming into each box and the quantity leaving each box. Take the S box, for example. We can say that DSDT equals the stuff coming in minus the stuff going out. There's nothing going in, but there's the ASI term coming out, so DSDT equals negative ASI, which we're given down here. We need to repeat this process for the other two boxes so we can form a full model of how the population of each group changes over time. It's similar to the traffic network linear algebra problem we did a while ago, where we sum the number of cars going into an intersection and set them equal to the number of cars going out of the intersection. It's a little different here, but the same concept still applies. Let's move into a more organized page to derive the constituent equations. I copied the diagram from the problem statement and drew a red box around the S group. You can treat this red box kind of like a beam, and you can treat the arrows kind of like forces. If this were a statics problem, you would sum the forces acting on the beam. That's basically what we're doing here. Instead of applying conservation of momentum, which is Newton's second law, we're applying conservation of people. The rate of change of each group equals the terms coming into the box minus the terms going out of the box. Once again, the ASI term is leaving the S box and there's nothing coming in, so DSDT equals negative ASI. Now let's move on to the infected group. The rate of change of the infected group equals the terms coming in minus the terms going out. We have ASI coming in and RI leaving, so DSDT equals ASI minus RI. And lastly, the recovered group. We only have the RI term coming in, so DRDT equals RI. These three equations describe the epidemic's dynamics. Each ODE is first order and nonlinear because of the presence of the individual independent variables being multiplied together, like the S times the I. Because each ODE is dependent on the other ODEs, we need to solve all three of them simultaneously. Therefore, we have a system of ODEs. The system is third order because we have a total of three coupled first order ODEs. This means we'll need three initial conditions, one for each order. 
If the first derivatives were, say, second derivatives, we would have a sixth order system because we would have three second order ODEs and we would therefore need six initial conditions. The way we solve these ODEs in one fell swoop is by recasting the three ODEs as a single vector of ODEs. I defined this new variable y, which is a three element column vector containing s of t in the first spot, i of t in the second element, and r of t in the last element. If we take the time derivative of y, we get y dot, or dy dt, equals s dot, i dot, and r dot. Note that s dot, i dot, and r dot are just these right hand side terms here. We now need to write s, i, and r in terms of y. We already said that s is the first element of y, i is the second element of y, and r is the third element of y. Therefore, we can replace each s with y of 1, each i with y of 2, and each r with y of 3. This is how we express the system of ODEs using just one variable, y. Once again, we need to do this because we need to solve all three ODEs at once. We cannot just use ODE45 three separate times for each derivative because they're dependent on the other ODEs. By declaring the y variable, MATLAB thinks it's solving a simple first order ODE, dy dt. But dy dt actually contains a vector of coupled ODEs. This is perfectly legal and is the approach you'll have to take to solve higher order ODEs because most higher order ODEs are inherently coupled. Before we start coding this in MATLAB, we need to do one more thing. The units of A and R are kind of weird. We see that A, the infection rate, has units of 1 over person per day, and R, the recovery rate, has units of 1 over day. We should verify this is true. We know that dsdt equals negative ASI. S and I both have units of people, or persons, whichever you prefer. Therefore, dsdt has units of people per day. Note that the units of time here is in days, not seconds. Therefore, one of the people will cancel out, and we're just left with A has units of 1 over people per day. In a similar fashion, we know di dt equals r times i, so we can see that r has units of 1 over day. I hope this helps you understand the weird units of each parameter. To recap, we performed a population balance around each of the three groups to obtain three coupled first order ODEs. We then recast the ODEs into a system of ODEs using the y variable so we can implement it in ODE45 and solve all three coupled ODEs at once. In the next video, we'll program this into MATLAB and interpret the results. See you next time.